Hi guys, it's Miss Lee, and today's lesson is on properties of operations. Before we actually begin the properties of operations, I want to talk about what we've been learning about so far in the past couple of lessons. We've been learning how to write equivalent expressions. We've learned that we can take the number 24 and we can write, find the prime factorization and write it as 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And these are equivalent values. You could, we also learned that if you have repeated multiplication, you can write that repeated multiplication with exponents. So instead of saying 2 times 2 times 2, we can write it as 2 to the third power or 2 cubed times our 3. And these three expressions are all equivalent. They represent the same amount. We've also learned that we can solve a numerical expression that has lots of operations like um, using order of operations like this expression here. We've learned that we can go through do the parentheses and we get 2 plus 8 which we get 10 and that these are equivalent amounts. We're going to continue with prop properties of operations. A property is a rule. We've talked about this before. It's like a mathematical rule something that they've done over and over again and every time they do it they get the same result so they've said oh well this is a math rule this is something we can do so it becomes a property and it's going to be ways for us to write expressions differently but so that they're still equivalent or still the same so your notes should be out make sure you're filling them out as we go along the first property we're going to talk about is the commutative property not commune there's no n the commutative property. And it says that the order in which two numbers are added or multiplied does not change their sum or product. Let's look at this numerically. If we're adding 4 plus 2, this property says we can change the order of the numbers we're adding and write it as 2 plus 4, and the answer is going to be the same. Check it. 4 plus 2 is 6. 2 plus 4 is 6. Those are equal. And the same is true for mul multiplication. If we're multiplying 5 times 2, we can change the order and rewrite it as 2 times 5. 5 times 2 is 10. What is 2 times 5? It's also 10. So the product did not change. This also works if you have three numbers. If you have 4 plus 2 plus 5, you can change the order of the numbers that you're adding. Maybe you want to do 2 plus 5 plus 4. You're still going to get the same answer. 4 plus 2 is 6 plus 5 is 11. Over here, 2 plus 5 is 7 plus 4 is 11. You still get the same answer. So the one thing to note is that the operation has to be all addition or all multiplication. This does not work for subtraction. This does not work for division. Let me show you why. Subtraction. If I do 10 minus 3 and I change the order and write it as 3 minus 10, these are not going to have the same answer. 10 minus 3 is 7, but 3 minus 10 is a negative 7. Not the same answer. It does not work with subtraction. It does not work for division. If I'm going to do two divided, 10 divided by 2, and I change the order and do 10, 2 divided by 10, I'm not going to get the same answer. 10 divided by 2 is 5, but 2 divided by 10 is 2 tenths. Not the same answer. It does not work for subtraction or for division. Only addition, only multiplication. So please write that down. Only works for, and I'm going to use the symbols, addition and <clears throat> addition or multiplication not subtraction or division so if you're asked if this is equivalent You might think it is because the numbers change their order, but then you have to look at the operations. Does that work for subtraction? No, it does not. Okay, this property also works for algebraically. 
And we need to start looking at it algebraically because we're getting into our algebra unit. We're gonna start solving equations. So it's really important to recognize these properties. Five plus X, we can change the order and write it as X plus five, and we're gonna get the same result. Just like with multiplication, three times X is the same as X times three. We're not changing the answer. It's still going to have the same value. It's still going to be equivalent. No, we don't know what x is, but that's okay. It doesn't matter because we're just changing the order of the numbers. We're not changing the operation. The operation is still addition, or in this case, it's still multiplication. It's just the order of the numbers. Let's look at the associative property. The way in which three numbers are grouped when they are added or multiplied does not change their sum or product. Okay, so this is talking about the grouping symbols. Remember, grouping symbols are parentheses or brackets or braces. And what we mean, look at it numerically. If we have the group of seven plus two and we're gonna add eight to that, we can rewrite this, keep the numbers the same, keep the same operation, it's all addition, and just move the parentheses. So our first group, in our first expression, the group was around seven plus two. In the second expression, we just changed the group and put it around two plus eight. Nothing else changed. You can do that. You're gonna get the same answer. Seven plus two is nine. Nine plus eight is 17. Over here, two plus eight is 10, and 10 plus seven is 17. We get the same answer on both expressions. Same thing for multiplication. 2 times the group of 5 times 12 is going to be the same thing as grouping 2 times 5 and then multiplying that by 12. You may be asked why. Why do we need to do this? It all has to, you're probably already doing this mentally and just don't realize it, but it all has to do with number sense. Okay. For some of you, you see this and you're like, oh, 9 plus 8, and it might take you a little while to figure out what 9 plus 8 is, Whereas you would maybe see, oh look, I could add two plus eight first because that's 10 and then just add seven. So mentally you're changing it and you're doing the two plus eight first. And it's all about your number sense. It's always easier to work with 10. Some of you don't need to worry about that. You know nine plus eight, 17. Same thing for the multiplication. Do you think it's easier to multiply five times 12 first? Well, if you're good at your 12s, yeah not a problem. Or do you see this two times five and decide to multiply that first because two times five is 10? Then you can multiply that by 12. Algebraically, the same thing. It's just we have a variable involved. So in our first expression, the group is around the two plus x. In the second expression, we changed it and put it around three plus two. Same thing for multiplication. We can change this expression. Instead of grouping two t times five, we're grouping two times t. You're still gonna get the same answer. The numbers and the variables did not change. Their order did not change. The operation did not change. What changed was where our grouping, where we had the parentheses. Then we have the distributive property. The distributive property says you can multiply a number by a sum or multiply the number by each number in the sum and then add. Sounds confusing, right? Okay, what it's saying is that you can multiply a number by a sum. That means I have three times the sum or the group of two plus four. So I can add them together, two plus four is six, and then multiply that by the three to get 18. Or I can multiply the number by each number in the sum and then add them together. So they're saying, or what you could do, let me erase this so you can see, is you can take this number three and you can multiply it by each number in the sum. So I can take three and multiply it by two, right here, and add it, because we have an addition symbol here, to this three times the four. And you're gonna get the same answer you would get six plus 12, which is 18. You get the same answer. You could even take this a step further and go ahead and multiply it out. Three times two is six, plus three times four is 12. Add it together, 
and you would get 18. Take a look. What operations do you see? I see addition that's inside the parentheses, inside the group, and I see multiplication. Remember, a number that's next to or outside of the parentheses, next to parentheses, and there's no operation symbol, that means to multiply. So the distributive property is the one that will have a multiplication and addition operations. And you could actually even have inside your group, you could also have subtraction inside here. We're going to go more into detail on distributive property in our next video lesson. Okay, but for today, we're just going to look at the, the property itself. And let's look at it algebraically. Here I have 2 times the group or 2 times the sum of x plus 1. So I can distribute. I don't know what x is. So I can't do it numerically where I add what's in the parentheses first because I don't know what x is. So I have to use the distributive property. So I'm going to take the 2 and I'm going to multiply it by each term inside the group. 2 times x. No, I don't know what x is, so I write it as 2 times x. Okay. Then my operation inside the parentheses is addition, so it stays addition. And then I'm going to take this 2 and multiply it by the 1, 2 times 1. I can simplify this expression. Since I don't know what x is, I know that I want two of them because it's two times x. So I write that as 2x. This 2 becomes the coefficient. We've talked about that. And then multiply 2 times 1 is 2. So this goes from two groups of x plus 1 to 2x plus 2. These are equivalent expressions. Most of the time, we don't write this middle step. We just use our arrows, and it's good to use the arrows. You actually need to show it and do it in your head. 3 times 4 is 12. The operation is addition. 3 times x, I don't know what x is, but I want 3 of the x's, is going to be 3x. Now, we cannot combine the 3x and the 12. It doesn't become 15x. Remember, like terms, if you're going to combine x's, it has to be with another x, and there is no x with a 12. So this becomes as simplified as it can get. So these are equivalent expressions. Then we have a couple more to go through. Identity properties. Identity is what you can do to a number so that it stays that same number. The sum of a number and zero is the number itself. I can have add zero to three and my answer is going to be three. If I have x and I want it to stay x, I can add x with zero and it stays an x then the product of a number and 1 is the number itself. If I have number 3 and I multiply it by 1, my product is going to be 3. If I have an x and I multiply it by 1, my product is going to be an x. And then the last property are the inverse properties, and we did this first semester. The sum of a number and its opposite is 0. So we did this when we were talking about integers. 5 plus a negative 5 equals 0. A negative 3 plus a positive 3 is going to equal 0. We can also use the property algebraically. x plus a negative x is going to equal 0. And then the product of a number and its reciprocal is 1. We did this when we were talking about dividing fractions, where you could dividing was the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. If I have 3 and I multiply it by its reciprocal, remember a whole number can be written in fraction form. I put in it over 1, and the reciprocal is where you turn it upside down, like reciprocal Fred. So if I multiply a number times its reciprocal, it's going to equal 1. The same thing for a variable, x. I can write it in fraction form by putting it over 1. I multiply it by its reciprocal, 1 over x, and what do we get? Well, to multiply fractions, multiply the numerators. x times 1 is 1x, or just x, and 1 times x is x. Anytime you have a fraction where the numerator and the denominator is the same, it turns into one whole. 
so again these are these two prop or the inverse properties we've been using them we just didn't call them the inverse properties okay and that's it for the lesson on the properties our next video is going to be practicing using these properties to find whether expressions two expressions are equivalent or not nice job